Hello, students. It's time for another talk. Um, this one about there being more than one way to do things in Python. Uh, there are different styles to writing code. Uh, and different programmers do not agree on, you know, what exactly constitutes writing in this style versus that style. There's, there's a lot of debate. You know, this is not stuff that's set in stone when we're talking about your style of writing code. Uh, but so far, I've been really pushing you to code in a functional way. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, it's not just using functions, though functions are used, but also we are not mutating things. We do not mutate anything in, in, in what we've been doing uh, so far. I mean, I've taught you how to mutate a thing, but you'll notice that, you know, inside our comprehensions, we never started with a set and, like, added to it inside the comprehension. Oh, please, please, I don't even like to think about it. Uh, but we've never, we've never really used those mutating commands in order to, uh, to arrive at our result. So uh, for purposes of what we're doing here, uh, I'm going to break things down into a functional style and an imperative style. The functional style is going to be arriving at it using, say, functions and uh, no mutation whatsoever. That's, that's maybe most importantly. Uh, the imperative style is when we sort of bit by bit try to give things instructions in order to get to an end result. Uh, so, for instance, uh, a functional style, uh, let's say we wanted to add up the first 10 integers. I for I, 10 positive integers. I could even just be lazy and do that because I can toss in zero there and it won't change the sum. Okay. Um, so, this is beautiful. Uh, there's another way to do this. Uh, so what we could do is we could step by step give instructions like maybe a child would do if we did 1 plus 2 plus 3. So let's try that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with i being 1. And then what I'm going to say is I'm going to say while i is less than 11. Uh, new keyword, while. What's while going to happen? What's while going to do? Well, it's going to do whatever I put after this colon until i is no longer less than 11. So as long as this is true, Python's going to repeatedly do whatever I put here. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to increment i Okay. And now what I have here is I have sort of a uh, you know, I'm going to stick this all together in one cell because I want to make this like its own little program. Uh, so let me delete that. Okay. But uh, what this is going to do is it is going to increase i uh, until it hits 11 and stop. But I'm not keeping track of any sort of a sum yet. So I need to have a sum. Now, I need to uh, keep track of what that is because I want to add up all these i's. So what could I do here? Well, I don't want to use the word sum. Do not use the word sum because you'll overwrite sum. Uh, let's let's use total. So I'm starting off with a total of zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, total plus equal i. So I'm going to add i to the total and then I'm going to increase i. And I'm going to do this over and over and over again. And now let's see what happened. Uh, what did I get for my total? Sorry about that. Total... 55. So I got the same thing. So this code here does the same as this. This is uh, more functional. It's, it's actually what you'd call declarative because it's sort of like speaking. It's sort of like asking Python directly, tell me what the sum is of, you know, the i's that are in this place. Whereas this is sort of a step-by-step -step instructions. I'm teaching the computer how to compute this sum. Um, so the two are they're different strategies. Um, now, while, one more time, while, you, you'll, you'll see, I said it does everything after this colon. Why did I indent both of these? Well, what while will do is it'll do everything after the indent. So I, I needed it to do more than one thing, so it was important that I indented this. If I were to not indent this, what would have happened? Well, I would have had the total, uh, added to the total, 
never incremented i because i is not yet 11 and it would have kept going back and add to the total add to the total add to the total forever i would have gotten stuck in an infinite loop so i need indents indents after the while will tell us what to do that's inside that while statement and it'll just repeat doing it over and over again over again now I know it's been a long time in the class. We've studied a lot of Python. But we haven't gotten to a for statement. So let's do this again uh, with a for statement. And I'll show you how that works. So you guys know for from comprehensions. Um, however, there's a for statement which is like, um, oh, and if I'm going to use for, I don't need that. There's a for statement that is much like while. And what it does is it, one more time, it takes i inside whatever this iterable is. It goes and it grabs the stuff from it. And then it does whatever you tell it to in those indents. And then it just keeps going. It grabs the next i from the iterable. And then it does what you tell it. And then it grabs the next i. And it does what you tell it in the indents. Anything outside of the indents uh, will not be, uh, that, that takes place after the, the for loop is over. So what did I get here for the total? I got 55 again. So these are three different ways of doing the same thing. Um, these two I would consider both uh, imperative. I'm sort of teaching the computer how to find the sum. Here I'm just basically asking for, for that sum, what that sum actually is. Um, so that's uh, a nice first example of writing programs in Python in different styles. Uh, and, and hopefully how a while loop works and how a for loop works. Be very careful with your indentation and what is in and not inside each indent.